This thing's been sitting for a lot of years. Let's see, four, four or six years, basically, just like it is. The front suspension needs to go next. The seats kind of put in there so I could figure out where the shifter goes so I can position the engine but I can't really do can't really throw the engine back in until I finish the front suspension I could but still need to finish the front suspension so I made the jig that holds the uprights and just put them up to the frame there and measure it and get it all perfectly positioned static right height and then weld the control arms together. This marks the center line of the car, and then that tape, that tape, and then same on the back side that holds the jig kind of in place, so if you kind of kick it, then hopefully it'll stay in the same spot. Uh, this control arm I built like six years ago, and or whenever it was that I stopped working on the car last, but the other side is not done. It's a uh, kinetic vehicles lower control arm kit and it comes with the the tube and the flanges and the uh, the rod ends are separate but he sells the same and then it's just a stock me out of ball joint so it's like one by two and then the sh the flanges this is the back section of the control arm and then the shock mounts there and then um, stock me auto ball joint kind of just bolts right in so the flanges I just tacked on there and then this is the back side of the control arm that will just bolt right through there so you kind of just jig this up to where you want it static right height and you measure from the floor to the lower ball joint and then you put your inner put your inner mounts at that same height from the floor so the the spherical bearing there to the ball joint should be a flat line even if the control arm itself isn't flat the line between the center of the ball joint and the center of the rod ends will be flat and level so for the driver's side here what I've done is I've just put the rod ends in there with the weld-in uh, threaded bungs for the tubing. And then I'll just hold the control arm up next to it and kind of mark where I need to cut the extra tubing off. And then I can put it together on the car and tack it and then take it off the car and fully weld it. The jig itself is for a certain tire size. So I have the tire size that I want in mind. It's a 205 50 15, and I made the jig to fit ex to be exactly as tall as that tire. And I made the track width the exact same as the stock Miata rear end track width, which I don't know if the Miata has a different front and rear tra track width, but I matched the rear track width. So you can see my measuring points there and there and then the it was measured from the floor to the center line here for that tire size just sizes from the internet i know that in real life the tire may be slightly different size but it's close enough and then just drill that center hole for the hub to fit through and then four lug holes and that'll hold it up now that's zero camber so you do have to introduce some camber there and you could build the jig with the camber in it 
and it might be easier that way. Um, I did, I just kind of shimmed the top of the, between the hub face and the jig and used just a digital level to figure out when it's at the camber that I want, which the camber that I want is one degree static, one degree at ride height. So here's the rod ends with the weld in bung. So this fits inside that uh, one inch by two inch tubing. And then to put this in a, in kind of a, a location that like, cause you, this has adjustability in it, like in and out. So you kind of just like thread this on. So there's like the same amount of threads here as there are here. And then it's in the middle of its adjustability range. Um, and then when you weld it all together, the, the adjustability range is in the middle, so that way you have the same in and out for ad adjustability. So the uh, static caster, or the caster set right now at ride height is set with the threaded rod through the steering, the steering arm coming off the spindle. And I believe when I did it, <laughs> I took the ball joints out top and bottom and then found like some scrap steel rod that fit through the ball joints holes just barely fit through both of them and then it was extended up and i just put the the digital level on it and kind of read off the caster angle and then adjusted the all thread as needed and i, I can't remember i think it was like seven degrees eight degrees of caster uh, I'll, i'm gonna have to recheck that before i weld it camber was set on the face of the disc. Um, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it says 88.8. .8, so I wanted about one, one degree of cam camber, and that is quite close. I have this little shim in here between the face of the jig and the face of the hub. And if I take that shim out, it'll go to 90 degrees, but you kind of can just adjust it with, the, with that top lug nut and the shim. And get it to about one degree and obviously you could go more aggressive with camber if you were doing like a strictly autocross car but this car is just going to be street the wheelbase is kind of set so that the, the center of the hub is between the two frame mount points and those may not be set on other chassis so like this one is a McSorley 442 frame and the control arm mounting points are front to back kind of set in the plans although you could move them if you wanted to move them um, I, can, I kept what he had and I added uh, that one inch to pull that one out a little bit uh, I think I, I can't quite remember but I think I just didn't know what I was doing six years ago when I did it and I probably could have left it without that. But at this point, if I wanted to go back, I'd have to buy another lower control arm kit and I don't really want to do that. And it's not going to make that much of a difference in the end. So I'm just going to leave it. Um, you can kind of see that the line that the control arm rotates on will be kind of pointing to the differential, or at least that's visually what it looks like. Although it's not as bad as it looks, I, I've measured it. And I think it's going to be okay for this car since it's not it's not going to be winning races or anything. It's just going to be fun on the street. So we have our we have our caster set. We have our camber set. We have the wheelbase set. We have the track width set. We have, we know the location of the lower ball joint because we tested it in here earlier and measured from the floor to the center of the lower ball joint. Then I've attached the control arm mounting points so that the rod end centers are at the same height as the ball joint center. So now with this tacked in, so I tacked in the whatever flange you want to call this, the lower control arm flange, onto it, and the rear arm can bolt in. 
and put the ball joint in. So now I'm just gonna put this in and then mark the end so that I know where to cut the control arm so that we can put it on here and weld it. So I just have them clamped here and I've drawn a line, on, a line on this side and it's close enough. I'm gonna have to cut it. You, I want it cut slightly shorter so that I have some material on the bung sticking out to get a good weld on. So close counts. I don't know if I can show this, but you can see that the bandsaw blade is separate from the part. The bandsaw cuts at an angle for some reason, and I can't figure out how to adjust it. So I always end up having to shim the part on the back. But if anybody knows how to fix that, let me know. Okay, so um, it looks like those cuts worked out just about perfect. There's a little bit of a, an edge sticking out for the on the bung so I can get, have some material to weld to there on both. So I'll probably take it apart again and drill some holes so I can do some rosette welds and not just have the edge of it holding it. And then we'll put it back on and tack it. Okay, so the top little rosette welds are done, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So now I can take it off and go weld it up on the bench. Oh, <laughs> 
This is just a stock Miata lower ball joint. This is actually two and a half inch by one inch box and it will fit in there, but you have to grind off some of the casting on the top and the bottom. Alright, so both lower control arms are done six years later. So now um, I'm just going to measure the all the points on the frame and what is up in the air right now is upper control arm mounting points. And I will use calculator like vsusp, vsusp.com to determine like roll center height and stuff and that will tell me where to put the upper control arm mounting points. <laughs> 